this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. In the mountains of Taiwan, the bishops are strangers in a foreign land. Their new home is a place of nightmares filled with deadly creatures and terrifying visions of another dimension. A Taoist priest uses ancient rituals to protect them from the angry dead and calm a power beyond human understanding. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In the Far East, many people believe that there are no boundaries between the physical world and the spiritual realm. Ghosts are a part of everyday life. On the island of Taiwan, in the foothills of the Yangming Mountains, there is a sacred valley where some say the dead have more power than the living. In 1984, the Bishop family visits northern Taiwan. Dennis Bishop has recently accepted an executive level position at an American company in Taipei. It was a major promotion for me. When you're offered jobs like this, you have the right to refuse, but if you do, uh, it's a long time till the next offer can come. So there's some pressure to take a proposal of that sort. Dennis's wife, Candace, is nervous about moving her two younger daughters, 16-year-old Stacy and 12-year-old Marissa. It was known in the expatriate community as a lawless country. I was extremely concerned that I was not going to be able to keep my family safe. A representative of Dennis's new employer brings the family to tour a company house a few miles outside of Taipei. Stacy is impressed. Drove up the long driveway and we looked at it, and it was beautiful. There was very little of it to not like. For Marissa, the house is almost magical. The house was stunning. I mean, we had come from a pretty small house living in Tokyo, which is a very crowded city, um, going to this mansion in the middle of farms, graveyards, and rice paddies. It was actually kind of surreal. has a bad feeling about the house. It was like a really powerful fist slammed into my back so hard that it pushed me forward. I lost my balance. What? Well, it felt like something or someone punched me in the back. I looked around and there was no one there. I didn't know what to think, but I was afraid. I don't like this place. You haven't even seen it yet. Come on. Yes, let me show you. There's a left here. You're really going to enjoy this place. Have you had some problems with flooding? We'll take care of that right away. It, it shouldn't be a problem at all. I'm 
Because it's been the heavy rains that we've been having here lately, and, and the house has been empty for a little while. Dennis, I don't like this house. It'll be fine once we fix it up. I don't like it. You want us to look at some other places before we make a decision? Yes, please. I think she reacted uh, very strongly and uh, didn't want to live there. It was decided that I would look with the realtor for other houses. Well, thanks for showing us the place. We looked at literally dozens of other places over a period of two weeks, and none of the dozens of houses we looked at were as acceptable as the one we had. Reluctantly, Candace agrees to move into the company house. I felt like I had no option. This was the best for my husband, therefore it was the best for my family, and it was my position as, you know, a, a rational woman was to find a way to make it work. On move-in day, the bishops meet a chum. Dennis's company has hired him as a driver for the family. Too much more left to do. I think, no, really I think we're pretty much done, don't you? Did you hear that? It sounded like it was coming from the cabinet. What was that? Screaming, ran and saw A Chung running at full speed up the stairs with a shovel. Spiders, they travel in pairs. Dennis. You know, he says, sir, these uh, spiders, Hopefully they mate we'll for life. The other one. And see. if you killed one, there's another one in there. I'll throw this out. It was a jungle. And I just kept saying, deal with it. I would learn how to deal with it. A few weeks later, Stacy and Marissa begin school, and Dennis starts his new job. Here's your lunch. Okay. All right, have an awesome day. Okay. All right, I want to hear all about it when you get home. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. All right, you too. Thank you.
I started seeing out of the corner of my eyes lights, like these orbs of light. They kept darting away from me, so I could never look right at it. Candace's first impulse is to call Dennis. It's so out of your box of reality, you don't know what to do. You know, do I pretend it doesn't exist? Oh, it's my imagination. I tried to find a rational reason for it. I never mentioned it to anyone because I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy. A few nights later. out there. There was always a sense of seeing something out of the corner of your eye and hearing something that didn't seem right. I personally tried to dismiss everything that felt a little out of normal. Every night before Stacy goes to bed, she checks her room for tarantulas. I heard someone walk into my room. I could hear it clearly. Stacy doesn't tell anyone about the voice she heard in her bedroom. The family has more immediate problems. Taiwan's rainy season begins, and the house starts to leak. There was always water coming through the walls. All the water that was coming down through the mountain just came into our house. doing your homework in the dark, you know you're going to hurt your lines. It's better than getting electrocuted. And the walls were filled with water, just the humidity and the dampness and the light switches were not grounded. 
you couldn't turn the light switch on without getting electrocuted. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, this is ridiculous. The family's electricity bills are impossibly high, heightening the tension between Dennis and Candace. Dennis and I were fighting all the time now. It was very, very tense in the house. All right, I will, but up until then, what are we going to do? I'm not sure I knew exactly why the tension was building, but you could feel it. There was a lot of discomfort, and I think we were taking that out on each other. Dennis calls an electrician to the house. He finds evidence of an underground power leak. The house apparently had been built illegally. It had probably not been ever attached to the electricity grid in a proper way. I had no access to any of the background. The uh, uh, landlord spoke no English at all. My predecessor was long gone. And uh, so I didn't pursue any of that. The utility company will have to dig up existing underground cables to solve the problem. One night soon after, Stacy is home alone. It was impossible to find some logic to understand what was happening. I just knew that I couldn't put it away. I still wasn't talking about it. I hadn't told anybody. I just realized that I might be in some trouble. Stacy gets out of the house as often as possible, spending time with her boyfriend. What made me the most afraid is for some reason, it clearly wanted to get my attention, making it obvious that it could open and close doors, that it knew my name, that it could walk directly up to me within a couple of inches and call out my name so clearly that I could not misunderstand. Stacy escapes to her boyfriend's house whenever possible. 
I know it sounds crazy. And I know that I just can't explain it to you. Oh, Stacy, you don't have anything to worry about. You know you're safe here, and if you need to call me, you can. You know you can count on me. You'll be fine. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't even really identify it. All I knew is that it was impacting my life tremendously on a day-to-day -day level. I felt extremely powerless. Stacy, don't worry about anything. It'll be fine. I, I was just leaving your house and I, I saw Thomas your mom. Thomas, slow down. I, I can't understand I, you. I don't know. She was out. Stacy's boyfriend she calls what? and tells Stacey's her what right. he saw. Go I need you to go check on her. Go check on her. Just go see if she's all right. Just go. Go. Hold on. Just go. Just go check on her. me. You didn't hear me calling you? No, I didn't. Thomas? Is she alright? She's fine. Okay. Thank you. Alright. Bye. Bye. Stacy, what's the matter? Talk to me. I'm so sick of this house. I'm sick of everything in it. I can't even go in my room without hearing footsteps or someone call my name. Stacy started to talk about her experiences, started telling me about the sounds that she had heard and the voices. I know, I've been hearing things too. She was having someone call her name. Yes, I have. I was having someone call my name. The more we compared stories, the more we talked about the stories, the more we realized that this could possibly be real. Dennis, we need to talk. You know, we have got to leave this house. We've got to leave Taiwan. 
What am I supposed Dennis to Dennis didn't boys? believe any of it, but what he did know was that something was really upsetting the family. Ted, you don't believe anything we've been telling you, do you? I don't think he thought we were lying, but he never knew what to say. It's not true. But I can't give up everything that I've worked for. It was made very clear that my dad's job was important to all of us, and we needed to find a way to, you know, to deal with it the best we could. What am I supposed to tell my boss? That I have to move because my house is haunted? I just said, I need to get the children away from the house. I need to get them out of Taiwan. During their school break, Candace takes the girls to a summer house in California. She begins to research the paranormal. One book theorizes that ghosts draw their power from the living. Candace concludes that if she and her daughters can ignore their fears, the disturbances will stop. I had two choices of either collapsing and giving up and leaving, or standing my ground and claiming my home for my children and my family. I remember dreading walking back in. It was just kind of this feeling of uh, pressure that would come over me. Hey, Marissa, Dad and I are just gonna be down the street at the Shaw's house. So call us if you need anything. And Stacy should be home from Thomas's real soon, okay. all right? I love you. Me too. Call us. I think that my parents were taking the proper measures to, to protect us. And they were trying to reassure us that everything was fine. Did you forget something? Stacy, is that you? Stacy?
Marissa, we're back, honey. Marissa, honey. Marissa, baby, what's wrong? What's up? Come on. Tell me. I remember someone coming in the room itself, opening the door, and actually pushing me over, actually coming into me. I felt oh, so victimized. So and I thought that I and my family might lose this battle. Marissa, honey, how are you feeling? I, I feel okay. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I'm fine. Do you want to talk about what happened last night? It's fine. Just don't worry about it. It's okay. We had no idea what was happening. I think we didn't want to even think about the possibilities. Did your sister say anything to you? No. Because none of them I've were really them. good. So we kind of just said, we don't know. We just don't know. I was very concerned I could no longer protect my children. Candace calls her friend Bob Patton, a journalist with strong ties to the Taoist religious community in Taiwan. He had done articles about various people that lived in the country, and one of the people that he had interviewed once was a very well-respected Taoist priest. This is it. I felt like, well, maybe I could find the strength to handle this as long as I knew that this man knew what to do. I remember him looking around and being surprised at what was in the house. The priest explains that many Chinese believe physical shapes and forms can influence the spiritual energy of a place. He had talked about how the moisture and how it was built into the mountain made a, a tremendous amount of negative energy be around the house. The design of the house draws He says that spirits. no Chinese architect would design a house like this unless they wanted to curse the inhabitant. Whoever built the home designed the home to kill us. <laughs> is the presence of what the Chinese call hungry ghosts. The reason that ghosts come back is because they don't have what they need in the afterlife. Let it be food, let it be money, things like that. They become hungry ghosts. They're looking for energy to survive and to live. What he saw was two bodies that were buried on our property. Chinese peasants believe that when a person suffers a violent death, they must perform a ritual to put these spirits at rest. knows oh, that Marissa has been attacked. And he proceeded to tell me that the spirits that were in the house were actually using me as an energy source. Yes, go on, you go ahead. He was concerned about her safety. He was very afraid for us and did not know 
if there was anything he could do to help the situation. I think he, he needed to gather his strength and he said he would be back in a few days. Candace speaks to her family's driver, A Chung, about the history of her house. A Chung, how long have you lived in Tianmu? All my life. Do you know anything about the, uh, the property before our house was built on it? For many years, there was a farm and an old house. Before this home was on the property, there was a I pig farm that had burned down and the husband and wife were caught in the fire. Candace believes these yes, could be the two spirits the Taoist priest envisioned. And a lot of people don't even want to talk. Candace okay, tries to convince her husband that the family must move. That is work. Look, I can't cancel this trip right now. It's a very hectic time for me. Everything's gonna be fine. The hardest part was trying to decide what was real and, 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 and what was imaginary. And I don't know that I ever reconciled that very well. Look what happened to Marissa. I know she's scared, but she's fine now. I have to go. Candace considers leaving Taiwan immediately. It was a very difficult decision. It would have meant the disintegration of our family because he couldn't go. She decides to stay and keep her daughters close. As long as Dennis was gone, the girls had to sleep with me in the bedroom so that we were all together. I slept with a butcher knife and a baseball bat underneath the bed. Oh. Get up quick, there's somebody outside. What, darling? There's somebody outside the door. forget um, having horrible nightmares that she would hurt one of us or hurt herself or hurt my father with that knife. When Dennis returns, he agrees to let the Taoist priest perform an exorcism on the house. We got a problem here, and I was willing to try anything to solve it. I knew I couldn't fix it, and maybe he could. Hello? 
A few nights later, the Taoist priest says he must perform the exorcism immediately. Yeah, we can he said to me to if he ever was going to have the power, it was now. The priest asks them to send Marissa to a neighbor's house. He was concerned that if Marissa were in the home when he was calling these spirits, that they might actually attack her. I was pretty panicked. I was pretty frightened. I genuinely didn't know what was going to happen. Dennis was willing to go along with it. How can we be using so much power? You know, Dennis, I don't know. What he explained was he was going to attempt to do an exorcism on the house and see if he could appease the spirits. The priest tells them to open every door in the house to give the spirits free reign. He has brought food and money as offerings for the hungry spirits. He lights incense in preparation for a ritual, which he hopes will appease the angry dead. The Taoist priest explains that earlier tonight he performed a funeral for a powerful dignitary. He will use the positive energies from that funeral in an exorcism of their house. By lighting this incense, we report to and summon all the agents of the symbols for the destruction of hell and the rescue of these benighted souls. The rescue. But I, I'd be the first to admit some really fairly unexplainable things happen. It's making our clothes move, our hair move, things moving through us in ways that made it hard to breathe. We don't know what's happening, but it's very, very real. Aid us in guiding them and illuminate the way. It was very physical. As much as I wanted to rationalize it and deny it and say it was all in my mind, it was difficult to deny. On the righteous path to the heavenly way, to heavenly peace. The priest asks Stacy to take offerings to the burial site in the backyard. You must be courageous. I looked at him horrified because this was the scariest experience I'd ever had. And he looked at me and said, no, you, you need to do this. Okay. Thank you.
The priest blesses every room in the house. He said a prayer in each room in four corners of the room. Lift the Holy Ghost. Amen. In each room when he would, would go in, the lights, they would dim and lighten. That was when I knew he clearly uh, was in some control of these energies. I really believed that he knew what he was doing. The priest tells the family that he has done the all that he can. I expected that it would all just go away and, and be okay. What he told us at the end of that was just exactly the opposite. He suggested that what he had done during the exorcism might uh, put us in good stead for two or three months, but after that we should, we should get out of there. He strongly recommended we leave that house. Before he leaves, the priest places an Yijing symbol on the front door. He hopes that it will help maintain a sense of harmony in the house. I knew that Stacy was graduating in June and she would be leaving. And so what I said was I was leaving too. It was one of the most eye-opening times of my life. I learned that there was a world that I lived in that I didn't know had existed before then. At the same time, probably one of the most scary times of my life. I know that there are such things as very powerful negative energies or spirits or whatever one wants to call them that can affect my environment, that can affect my family. It was a turning point for me because my world, my safe world that I had created where nothing bad existed was shattered. this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Arnie Johnson and Debbie Glatzel move to a new home, the family becomes trapped by a demonic nightmare. The 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 they try to run but dark forces target them all, thrusting them into a brutal showdown with pure evil. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In the river valleys of western Connecticut lie historic towns dating back to the early 1700s. Here, Gothic churches and weathered graveyards stand as monuments to a belief in a higher good. Yet hidden beneath this landscape, an ancient evil still lurks. Arnie Johnson and Debbie Glatzel abandon the big city and rent a house. Arnie works for a tree service. Debbie is a dog groomer. Debbie's younger brother, David, comes along to help. The cost of the move consumes most of their savings, but they believe their new life will be worth it. I was excited about it. 
So you can imagine having nice picnics, place for the kids to play instead of the streets. It really felt like it was a good move. It was like my dream house. And I thought we can build a nice, beautiful life there. Do you have the keys? Okay. Do you have the keys? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the keys. David was our family teddy bear. He always had a smile on his face. He was always ready and willing to give a hand if he needed help. David, do you think you can sweep off the master Oh, yeah, sure. He was a real good kid. And uh, I guess I'll wipe the windows down. Yeah, yeah I'll get this and I'll have to my boxes. Okay. Uh, we've got a problem in the room. Problem? Just come look. Debbie is surprised to see that the previous tenants left their bed in the master bedroom. I couldn't set up our bedroom furniture and the master bedroom was in there. I wanted our things in there. I'll tell the landlord to get rid of it. Just, uh, sweep around it. Okay. back in there. I said, David, come on. I got things to do. If you don't want to help, just say so. Look, I have to clean the house. If you want to stay out here and play, fine. What's going on? No, I I noticed David was outside, but I really didn't pay attention. I figured he was bored. David remains outside the rest of the day, too frightened to even approach the house. That evening, they return to the Brookfield home of Debbie's family, where they have been staying until they move into the new house. So how much stuff do you guys Her mother, about Judy Glatzel, assures them they can stay with her as long as needed. What's the matter, honey? I keep seeing the old man. What old man? David imagined an old man pushed him at her house. He did. I really did see him. He's talking to me right now. You can actually hear him? He's there now. I can see him. You can see him. What's he doing? There's an animal frightened by the old man. It's calling at the door. That's enough. The joke's getting old. Don't move in there. David, Arnie and I are going to live there. We've already spent two months' rent. He says if you go back, he's going to hurt you. Yeah, right. Old man, if you don't want us to live there, show us a sign. See? Nothing. It's your imagination. Let's get you to bed. 
was scaring me. I was becoming frightened. Arnie, what if David's right? What if the house is haunted? Because now you have evidence. And so you're starting to wonder, well, maybe there's something to this old man and... Look, we have all our money tied Debbie up. and Arnie worry that there's something not quite right with the house. But they decide to move in anyway. There's a ghost in the house. They've already I'm paid sure two that. months' rent, and Arnie has invited his mother to live with them. Okay. I wasn't gonna let anything shatter our new life. The next morning, Arnie and Debbie return to their new house to continue cleaning. saw the scratches on the doors. I was starting to really question, well, maybe something is definitely wrong here. That was proof enough for me. So we give up the house. Agreed. Well, let's get our stuff. As they move out, Arnie's mother really? arrives. We're not gonna take the house, Mom. You know, I just gave up my apartment. I she was upset with me and Arnie. You know, How could you do this to me, leaving me here, straighted like this? There's no such thing as ghost. I'm sorry, Mom, we're just not gonna take the house. But I was so frightened, I didn't want to stay there. Just give me the keys. And I tried to explain to her what happened. Just give me the damn keys, please. She didn't believe that. Don't tell me that kind of stuff. Arnie's mother decides to stay in the house despite his pleading against it. We had a little bit of conflict over that, and which was totally understandable. You know, she felt abandoned. He's coming for me! He's coming for me! Arnie! Something's happening! He's coming for me! I can see him! He's coming for me! He wants to get me! He's coming for me! I can see him! Who's coming for you, David? Is it the old man? Except at night, he turns into a beast. He said he's floating over the treetops and he's headed here. He wants to hurt me for telling you guys. I can see him. Calm down, David. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you. He's mad at me because I told you about him. Everything's gonna be okay. I mean, I seen the fear in this child it was just overwhelming. Something was going wrong. And I believed him. We told David, you'll be fine. You're, you're gonna be safe with us. The next day, the family goes on an outing. David seems recovered. Judy, Arnie, and Debbie hope he's put the odd incident behind him. Basically, the whole day was a great day until we returned back to Brookfield. Come on, David, let's go in. No, I can't. Why not? He's in our house. Check it out, okay?
All right, buddy, let's go on inside. There's nothing in there. No, I can't go back in there. David, move now. And I said, well, I'll protect you. The family will protect you. We'll do whatever we can. But he's always here. Try to calm down. No, he's still here. Arnie came in and checked. It's fine. Everything's fine. See if you can sleep. Yeah. All right. I get some rest. We had to be strong for David. Because he felt all alone. I think once he realizes he's safe, I think he'll get over it. Well, until then, let's keep a close eye on him. It sounds like the attic. It's probably just a squirrel. I'll go check it out. Here. I don't know, but there's nothing up there. There's a bunch of boxes and dust. flying on the floor. Oh, help me! He says he's gonna take my soul! David, no one's gonna take your soul. We're gonna protect you, okay? The scariest part to me was seeing David go through this with nothing there to do it. It was terrifying. I saw him getting beaten. Debbie and Judy tell their priest about David's torment. His skin would turn red where he'd been hit and begin to bruise. Something was attacking him. Oh, 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 help me! He would cry for help, but there was nothing we could do. Please, can you help us, Father? There's an outside chance that this could be demonic possession. The priest says that before the church can become involved, they will need to investigate. In the meantime, light these holy he suggests that the family light candles and use holy water for protection. And pray as much as you possibly can. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'll go call Father. I mean, you felt hopelessness. You're trying to protect them, and it and he's still receiving the blows. The holy candles only seem to make things worse. We have a big problem. I bless this place 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The next morning, the priest tries to cleanse the house of evil. I bless this place in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave and go back to where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave and go back to where you came from. the house it made us feel better we felt like we were being protected but the priest admits that the blessing may not be enough he says he's going to consult two experts on hauntings in the demonic just in case Ed and Lorraine Warren have investigated hundreds of cases, including the Amityville Horror. Ed is known worldwide as a religious demonologist. Of course. And Lorraine is a clairvoyant. And when he called, he told about this case, about the strange things that were happening. How soon does he want us up there? Tonight? There is something definitely wrong, and I believe it could be possession. And so he said, I'd like you to look into it. And so I said, Father, would you like us to go tonight? Yes, I would. I think it's pretty urgent. <laughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren go to the Glatzel home to evaluate David. Hi, I'm Lorraine. We spoke earlier. Thank you for offering to help. And this is my daughter, Debbie. When I first met Ed and Lorraine, I said, oh, thank God somebody's going to help us. They'll let us know what's here. They'll let us know what we're dealing with. There was tremendous tension in that house. You could you could cut it with a knife. Uh, David, these kind people are here to help. I know who you are. And when he lifted his head up, it was no longer David. And to see that, that is very intimidating. You're seeing a creature in that child's body. trip coming up the stairs tonight. How did you know about that? The beast told me. I'd like to ask some questions to the rest of the family first. Then I'll come back and we'll talk. He was constantly being informed by a level of psychic ability but it wasn't a psychic ability coming from any good. Lorraine didn't want to say exactly what we had. I felt that she knew, but she didn't want to scare us any more than we already were. And what else has David done that seems supernatural? He told us we'd find scratches on the door of our rental home.
And we've witnessed David being attacked by something invisible. It, it looks the family's like testimony may be needed later to convince the church to authorize an exorcism. Bruises, as if it had really happened. You have to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is not psychological what is happening to this individual. I'd like to ask the beast a few questions. Is he a ghost? Are you a demon? Does he have any special powers? He could throw you out the window right now. Well, if he has those powers, why not have him knock on the table or knock on the walls? He's laughing at you. You can't order him around. He can't do it. I guess he can. To a different state. David says it lives at the rental house. It'll follow you. She explained it would it do no go good at that point because wherever we would go, it would follow us. And that's the difference between a haunted house and haunted people. Haunted people, these things will follow you. Well, then what can we do? Ed and Lorraine will... tell them that to free David, the church will have to intervene. Do you mean an exorcism? Yes, only a month. Ed explains that it could take months for the church to approve a formal exorcism. Instead, the Warrens hope to arrange for a minor exorcism, which will only take a few weeks. She said, this is the big one. This is the beast of all beasts. We were very fearful for the family. I remember Ed talking to them that it was not always their son that was there when this took over. And be sure that you lock your bedroom door. Alarmed by the evil that has invaded their lives, Arnie and Debbie return to the rental house to try to rescue Arnie's mother. I felt really concerned for my mother because well, this is a place where it's all emanating from. What do you want? I said we should have to move out. This house. It's not safe. I have no place to go. I'm staying and that's fine. But she didn't want to hear it. For a few days, David remains free of demonic possession. Stop hurting me. 
Quit picking on the child! Do you hear me? If you want to pick on somebody, pick on me! Barney, don't! I would challenge it to take me out. A few days later, when David seems recovered, Arnie leaves to run a few errands. The car engine just started to race. to the tree. All of a sudden, the vehicle just took off. Didn't have no control. Ed and Lorraine Warren suggest that Arnie and Debbie talk to an exorcist. I looked up. And there was a demon. What did he look like? He looked just like the devil. And I'm telling you, I've never been so scared in my life. Why do you think it happened? I think it was, uh, because I, I, I challenged the, the demon to uh, attack me instead. I know you meant well. My father said, you just did the wrong thing. I know you're trying to help, but that was the worst thing you can imagine. But you should never have challenged the demon to attack. This crucifix has been blessed. I want you to wear it at all times for protection. Be careful, both of you. I'm going to begin making plans for a minor rite of exorcism. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I know who gave you that. David looked at the crucifix, saw it on Arnie's neck, and he said, I know where you were, and I know who gave you that, and he said the names. It won't do you any good. <laughs> and somehow, it was thrown off at Arnie's neck without anyone touching it. It was thrown across the room. He went back to the well. What well? The one behind the rental house. There is no well, David. Yes, there is. That's how he comes into our world. If David's right, Arnie urgently needs to rescue his mother from the rental house. Can I have the holy water?
The house is deserted. Why don't you go look at the other rooms? I'm gonna go check out back. Arnie fears that his mother became so terrified of the demon that she moved without telling him. And I went around to the back to see this well that David was talking about. I just remember standing there, staring into his eyes. to the back to see this well. I came under demonic possession. And the next thing I know, I was in the house. And I don't remember anything between there that period of time. Lorraine Warren checks in with the family to see how they are coping. David's been feeling much better the last day or two. I'm glad. Yeah, he's almost acting like his normal self. These things you got? are so terrifying when they are happening. We're only a phone call away. We always tell them that. You don't know how many times you just have to go back. Uh, how soon do you think that will You're be? telling them how to protect themselves particularly the parents. It really took a terrible toll on their mother. He might have another episode any minute. Lorraine tells the family to be patient and assures them she'll do whatever it takes to expedite the exorcism. What happened? 
possession set in. But it wasn't David. He had the knife, and he went after Arnie with a knife. I didn't blame David. I mean, it was not him. He wouldn't even think this way or try to act this way. You would never see that coming out of him. David tells them that the beast has called upon more demons to possess him. They're all tormenting me. They attack him together, demanding he give them his soul. He was frightened. So all protected him as much as we could. I was so worried, I was frightened. Trying to fight something you can't see. The family now watches David 24 hours a day. They take turns. But stress and lack of sleep push them to the breaking point. Arnie had to work, and he wasn't getting any sleep. It was rough on him. But I was so frightened. I was scared from David, what he was going through. Five weeks after David's possession began, the priests blessed the house in preparation for the minor exorcism. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. I'm thinking to myself, this has got to work. Leave this place and go back where you came from. How much more can we take? How much more can David take? Jesus Christ, I command you, leave this place and go back where you came from. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Most glorious Prince of the Heavenly Army, Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Behold the enemy and murderer of all, vehemently, transfigured into an angel of light, with the whole troop of malignant spirits, grant the enemy to the church. Exorcism continues for hours. 
God the Father commands you. God the Son commands you. We just had to hold them there so they could do their ritual. Every spirit, every power, every they were making a sign to the cross, which made this beast scream and yell. You can't believe how powerful it is. He's not breathing. Let him go! Come on, David. Come on. God the Father commands you. God the Son commands you. God the Holy Ghost commands you. Stop him doing it! Come on, David. I tried to save him. Come on, David. God the Son commands you. God the Holy Ghost commands you. The Majesty of Christ, the eternal word of God that made flesh, commands you. Get the chair. One demon has been exercised. The bad ones are still here. But others remain. When you are involved in this battle, you don't stop. They were reaching a point where they could exercise him. Enemy of human salvation. The exorcism goes on as the priest deals with one demon at a time. Cursed dragon in every diabolical region, we adjure you to the living Son of God, through the Holy Ghost, through the true God, through the Holy God. God Satan, the of every valley. David is finally free. But Lorraine and the priests have been battered by a spiritual battle with unholy demons. Every one of them take their toll on you. They do. They leave scars. And scars stay there forever. David recovers completely and resumes his life as a normal 12-year-old. What are they doing? <laughs> the harrowing encounter brings Debbie and Arnie even closer together. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> Our love has only grown stronger. I mean, he was willing to give his own life was willing to sacrifice himself to, to save my brother. I hope people that are out there can open their minds and hearts and realize that such things do exist. To this day, Arnie Johnson and Debbie Glatzel believe that demons still haunt their old rental property. Lurking in darkness. Waiting for a new victim to devour. Yeah.